Hello, Teddy. How How's it going? Oh, I'm um, okay. I'm doing <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> have you have you gotten any rest since you've returned home from Delphi? Absolutely not. <laughs> All the things that I didn't get done in those two weeks, Ooh. I had to get done in one week. And now back to work. Oh. So no. But and you're away okay. on course right now. I'm what? You're away on course right now, aren't you? Oh, yeah. I forget the Canadian thing. Yeah, away on course. Yes, I am away <laughs> on course right now. What do you call it? I just call it work. I lump it all into the same thing. <laughs> I would say oh. going to school. Okay, you're out of town. Oh, <laughs> going to school. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm in a different place. I don't have to deal okay. with all the things I hate about home. So that's that's good <laughs> enough for me. <laughs> Oh. Still not getting any rest, but you are sleeping in a bed as opposed to a chair on a ramp outside of a court building in Delphi. Yeah, or my car or, you know, yeah. wherever I happened to rest my head that night. Yeah, you went back and forth, didn't you, to your car quite a bit? Well, that was the only place I think I ever got sleep. <laughs> if I If I could sleep. I mean, most of the time I couldn't sleep. It really surprised me how long I could keep myself awake. But I know. It was still a good time for what it was. It's kind of weird saying that, but. Yeah, it was. Well, what do we call it? A trauma bond in a way, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean. It was its own thing. Unless you have your absolute dream job and you don't have to worry about money. You get up every day and you go do something you really don't want to do. And this is something that I wanted to do for a long time. And the fact that I was able to do it and it went as well as it did as far as the people I was around. I mean, it, it was one of the most meaningful experiences of my life. So sleeping on the floor on a ramp around people I don't know, fine <laughs> with me. Yeah, it was, it really was a great experience. Um, I was thankful that I was able to be in that courtroom as much as I was able to get in there. Uh, we, we, of course we saw the rules change Every Daily. day uh, for the first few days, and then we, we'd get into a bit of a pattern, and we kind of knew what was going on, and then they'd, change, they'd tweak something else. and But we kind of leveled off there until, pretty much until the state rested. And then once that happened, it shifted again, I think. Yeah, from that what I heard. We left, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That we, I'm really glad that I wasn't there for. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, yeah. there were definitely a lot of different people yeah. coming in once the state rested. But even before, if it was a day where the news went wild with all the stuff that they saw, right? the next night it would be a million people coming in asking, is this the line? Yeah. Well, yeah, you see people sleeping on the sidewalk. It, I think this is the line. But I don't think you're going to get in because you got here at like 1130 at night. Right. Yeah. <sighs> So we weeded those people out pretty quick. I, I would say as much as I feel bad that you can't just go walk into the courtroom when it's time to yeah. go. Yeah. But we did, we, you know, there were some locals that came a few and oh, yeah. when they were there, I mean, I, I personally tried to help all of them that I knew were just, you know, regular local people coming and didn't really, they just wanted to go into court and hear, some of the evidence and they had no idea of what, you know, we'd been battling and, or how the line w would work and all that. So I would try to help them, you know, as much as I could, but it was kind of out of our control and with tw only 24 guaranteed seats. Yeah. For when we were there, when we were there and then it, <laughs> and then it lessened even further, there was a lot, it's just a lot of issues with that. It was unfortunate that they, you know, Judge Gall just didn't allow an overflow room. But Even if she would have come out with rules, yeah. you know, something set, because she's got all these officers from all over the place that have to enforce right. whatever she says. Yeah. And then she really didn't give them a real framework to work off of. So I felt bad for them, too. I mean, they would come up and talk to us all night long. Yeah. But, yeah. They, they, yeah. They were great. I overall, like absolutely. Those guys were great. My, yeah. my experience with them. 
Oh yeah. No, me too. I, there were a couple of people that I would see every day Yeah. and you develop a rapport with them and it, yeah. then you get to the point where you start seeing other people that are coming in on shift and you're just like, I feel really bad for you. Yeah. I think there were about 12 different law enforcement um, counties, I guess, that were I, there. I, I something believe 10 it. To 12, something like that. There were a lot. There were a lot. They, they called in a lot of reinforcements for that. And I guess the last day at verdict on the 11th, they, there were 21 law enforcement officers in the courtroom, inside the courtroom. Jesus. From, yeah. 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 So heavy, heavy uh, presence in anticipation of bad behavior, which there wasn't, there wasn't, thankfully. I guess it was a good deterrent. Yeah, I, I was scared when I first mm. got there. Just all the different people. You really expect something to happen. Yeah. But for the most well, part, yeah. nothing. I mean, people helped everybody out especially the ones that were going every day and trying to get yeah. in like you. It was good. It was and cool it, to see all the subs come and the subscribers for the, a lot of the creators, they would have, they would come and sit in line for them overnight because, because, you know, the creators, the podcasters and YouTubers were so exhausted, just like the media. I mean, the media was hiring. Oh yeah. The media was hiring line sitters. Well, it was strange at first because I, I was kind of getting pissed off because it, it just seems yeah, not right. But then after a couple of days when you realize right. you have to stay up all night and then you get into court and you're like, okay, this is the beginning, but I'm already 10 yeah. hours right. behind. Yeah, And then you get out and there's already people waiting in line. I mean, what do you do? Yeah. And I could see when I could see when I, like I went, up until day 14, which was the Saturday, um, a couple of days after the state had rested. And I had always intended to, to leave, to come back to Canada when the state rested. Um, and um, what was I going to say there? Um, oh, I could see where the afternoon line was going to require a line sitter because of course, nobody was guaranteed a seat at, uh, just because you got in the morning didn't mean you were in in the afternoon. So you'd have to get out of court session and then immediately run down to the first floor and get in line for the afternoon session. Mm -hmm. But that that line would start as soon as the morning court session started. So as people realized this was kind of the process, like you might not want to wait out all night to go to the morning, but if you went at nine or 10, you could get in for the afternoon. Then that became an issue for those because, because pretty much anybody that was in, in the morning also wanted to go in the afternoon for the most yeah. part. So yeah, it, it was definitely a huge issue and I was able to get in for most sessions and, and you did, you, you didn't miss any, did you, when you were there? I missed, I missed that too. last Saturday actually, because I, I slept in and I woke up and I'm like, oh crap, it's going to take me a half an hour to get up there. But I got to the courthouse at like 845. Oh, I remember because that was the day that we watched the jury watch those three hours of, of video. Right. Which I'm really not mad that no, I didn't get in, but it was funny because I walked in and there was already six or seven people in the line. I went, well, I guess I'll just wait and see what happens. So I sat down and I saw Doug Carter up on the second floor and I was like, oh, damn it. Like, I haven't seen him the whole trial. Like, I really right. want to be up there if he's going to talk. Yeah. And he was on five minutes max. Like they really only brought him in to confirm August of 2021 is when uh, he, he released the FBI from their duties on the case, I guess, basically. That was literally it for his testimony. It was very short. And Nick McClellan asked if uh, he could be uh, released from his subpoena. And they said yes. And then, of course, he did go. He was front row with his wife for the verdict. Um, yeah, I heard on about the that. the 11th. And, um, yeah, he he broke down, uh, head in his hands and and crying when the verdict come down. And then he reached behind him um, to Becky Patty. Um, 
So, you know, I, I did see some photos of him and his wife outside of the court and, uh, it was just, you know, he, he's just been there every step of the way. And, uh, and it must've been an extremely emotional day for, for him along with thousands of others, tens of thousands, I would say. For sure. Well, I mean, just watching it from afar over the years, he yeah. was the face mm -hmm. of this case. So to not see him throughout the whole trial until that last day was weird. But I saw him and I was like, oh, my God, that's Doug Carter. Holy yeah. crap. Well, was that the first time? Yeah, I suppose that's the first time you've seen him. Yeah. You, and I, him. Yeah. I think I was sitting there like going over my notes and I happened to look up and he was walking <laughs> through the second floor. And I was like, oh, my God, I can't yeah. believe I slept in. Then he everybody said he was on for five minutes, so I wasn't that mad about it no, after all. No, that's right. Did he have his hat on out in the lobby? Out in the I, I think he had it under his arm. Okay, yeah. yeah. But I'm not, I'm not too sure because, again, I think I might have gotten an extra hour of sleep than I was used to getting. But that really means that I <laughs> actually got an hour of sleep. So I wasn't, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't really paying attention. If it wasn't written down on paper, I don't remember it. Yeah. Even <laughs> when it was, when I've been reading through my notes, started to read them through the last couple of days, you know, a bit. And, and I'm, I'm learning and remembering things because I'm, I'm like, Oh wow. I forgot about that. You know, I, oh, yeah. oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> Well, there's certain things like as the day goes on and my handwriting gets worse and worse and worse. And I'm like, oh, I know. What did I write? And then I'll think about what I had just written up top and I can put it all together in my head. You don't remember everything exactly how yeah. it happened, but I, I really only wanted the notes for the things that I still had questions about. And mm -hmm. if people made like a really good exact quote, I'd put the little the little right. quote around it and yeah. just leave it. And the rest of the time I'd listen, but. Well, I sidebar my notepads with observations, um, things overheard in the gallery and my observations of behavior, uh, specifically for the jury, for, you know, uh, a lot of the, a, a lot for Alan and his family and uh, occasionally for, you know, little, little interactions that, that they would have in the well and you know or judge gall or whatever but um so it, it's it's kind of funny when i read through my notes it's uh i've got two yeah. things going on i've got the testimony and court record uh type stuff and then i have my sidebars <laughs> I, I have my own sidebars I believe it. That one day I sat next to you and I'm like, holy crap, I cannot be next to her while I'm sitting here because all I hear is shush, 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 shush. Oh, sorry. Shush. And I'm, was, like, yeah. I'm like, there's nobody even talking yet. And she's already got 30 <laughs> observations. So it's good. It's good. I knew if I did that, I would try to be a perfectionist with getting everything. And I like you can tell after the first day, like I really tried to write down, okay, here's the witness. Here's the direct, here's the cross, here's exactly what everybody's asking. And I realized I wasn't going to go anywhere if I kept doing that. So I yeah, said, just yeah. stick to the main points. If it's something that either you think is interesting or you think other people are going to want to hear about everything else, just observe, you're going to get more out of it overall if you do that. So, yeah, I mean, I, I typically run around 30 seconds behind, so I'm still writing about, you know, 15 to 30 seconds behind what has been set. So I'm kind of always, so if somebody would sit beside me and, and say, ask me just one little thing, like whisper, just anything. And it would throw <laughs> me right off. But most, most people would realize, you know, or I would tell them if, you know, I was, I was typically sitting when I could with people I knew, but yeah, I had, I burned through five of my black roller pens that I have. Yes. Um, and I, and they, they were silent unless I'm on a certain angle. So I was trying to be respectful of that, but I do remember that day that we ended up beside each other and I was loud because I was like furiously oh, um, yeah. trying to keep up, but um, you know, and you just can't sometimes, but I don't know how to take notes any other way. I just, I, I, I have to just do what works for me and everybody has their own style. Um, it and, helps everybody uh, get something different out yeah, of it. Yeah, that's which right. Is good. Right. And and you know, the day that I couldn't see what was on the TV screen, um, 
and I and I had to to look around and or, or you know only listen or not view. You pick up, you make the best of it anyway. You do your observations and heaven forbid you have a little minute to look around. Like <laughs> you know, well, that's what I'm saying. I don't know how anybody had all these jury observations. I mean, mm -hmm. I might look up and and see Richard Allen or see the look on Gull's face as she's listening to the back and forth banter between the state and the defense, but there was no way yeah. I could have done what a lot of you guys did as far as that goes. I There were a couple key moments that I was kind of proud of myself because I don't think anybody else caught at the time, but yeah. And what would they be? I know you've told me a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> or they, we'll save them for another, another time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure Wait. there there might be a couple in my notes today. Yeah, but a yeah. lot of them are right in line. Like it'll be somebody talking on the stand, and then I'll write my little observation. And it, some of it goes hand in hand with who's oh. up there, and then others, it's just kind of a random observation whenever. You know, as an example, if you were looking down, you wouldn't have seen Baldwin manhandling Teresa Liebert up there in front of the TV. I mean, he was literally grabbing onto her and moving her around. Do, were you there for her? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That I mean, that was funny because she was, really, she well, didn't seem like she knew where she was, let alone where she was going. Woman, the poor She's woman. like, is it okay if I position you? And she looked at him like, what? Yeah, it but was didn't hear it kind of weird. Like people around me, whoever I was sitting around, they kind of like physically I, reacted to that. It was just like, oh, that's inappropriate. Like that's no, well, I, I remember a lot of laughter when it happened yeah. because it, it was an awkward thing Ooh. and you couldn't hear yeah. her at all. So she was up at the board trying to show where she lived yeah. and that, that microphone that was right there on that other witness stand that nobody actually sat in. I, you know, um, I, I get that, but I, it was all it was weird. Strange. I mean, yeah, everything was, was so the, strange. The audio, like they, I mean, I just felt that they definitely could have corrected that. And you're right, that other, it was almost like they had the other witness or that other microphone was tap was the one that was actually tapped in. Like, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. People ran the gamut as far as how their speaking voice was mm. even without the microphone some people you just heard as clear yeah. as day like Nick. and then well I, he's the loudest out of all of them he kind of scared me a couple of times because i wasn't expecting anything out of him you go objection you're like dude relax <laughs> it's okay <laughs> everybody <laughs> outside can hear you <laughs> no i thought he was i thought his projection was great with that i didn't find it too loud myself he, no, he, did, he, was just, eh? he was just the loudest, I think. Yeah, out of oh everybody. yeah, he definitely was. Yeah. Him, I'm trying to think of the other person. There was one, I think it might have been a witness that was Probably. extremely loud, but it just goes to show you some people, you couldn't hear them after you told them to speak up, and they're mm -hmm. right in the microphone. So it was hard, even if you got into the courtroom some days, you really yeah. didn't get... They kept saying that microphone was had nothing to do with... The audio. It was only for the record re reporter or something. The court recorder. They, yeah, like they, I they don't said know. that for her. I don't know to go back and listen to it or to just have the audio as a record. But every time somebody would get up, they would say that it amplifies yeah. the voice for the gallery, but it doesn't do anything for the jury and the attorneys. So. Hmm. For seventy five thousand dollars, though, if that's if that was their podium, they need to go with a different audio guy because wow. I I kind of just had the my observation and thought was you know the way audio stuff is set up and everything. Like I just think that white noise machine had something to do with it because I mean that thing worked well every time they went to sidebar they'd turn on that white noise thing. And, it, and you couldn't hear a word they ever said and which was the point but i just feel like it was connected and overriding the actual audio system or something i don't know well i mean we, I just, would get, we would get yelled at for talking even when the white noise machine was on so they must yeah. have been able to hear us better than we could hear them right yeah because i was always whispering and i would get really anxious if somebody raised yeah. their voice a little bit because you know anything worried about in trouble for it. yeah yeah, she, um, she scared the crap out of me. Yeah, uh, yeah. 
doesn't help when you're sleep deprived. But were you there when that woman stood up? No. (laughs) Oh, you weren't. That was what day was that? I think that was uh, the first. It was the first or second day for sure. I might have even been the afternoon of the first, and she stood right up with her hand up and (laughs) said, and she and Judge Go said, "Excuse me, ma'am, you need to sit down." And she said, and she starts to say something. I have it all in my notes, but she said, and then she said it again and louder. Excuse me, ma'am, you have to sit down. And then she spoke out and said that about the microphone not being pointed towards the witness. And that was, uh, you know, we were unable to hear. And she wasn't wrong. That was the afternoon of opening day. I remember that. That was my first time in court at trial. So it was a little bit alarming, but I thought they might kick her out, but they didn't. I was surprised because wow. it was kind of shocking when she stood up with her hand up in the air in the middle of, you know, in the middle of court. <laughs> I know. Like the, it was... the way that she acted for closing your eyes for two minutes after, you know, being outside in the cold, not getting any sleep. I, I yeah. thought we were all getting kicked out. Yeah. And, you know, that day, the worst day was uh, Melissa Oberg, the firearm testimony expert for seven hours. That day seemed to be the pinnacle of the exhaustion of everybody and <laughs> and everybody, you know, just, yeah. you. it wasn't just the public or the reporters or, you know, it was a broad spectrum of people. At one point I looked, I had counted 15 people nodding off, but it wasn't because they were bored. It was, I mean, it was very dry and technical testimony. Certainly for a few, it probably was because they were bored, but mostly it was because of sheer exhaustion and unable to keep your, you know, to keep your uh, eyes open. That was day seven. So we'd been into it for seven days of testimony and, and that day of the ballistics and it was, yeah, it was a lot of very technical, dry testimony for sure. So, oh yeah. But let's get to Sarah Carba because I had been there on day four when we had um, Rayleigh and Bree and Betsy Blair. And it seems to me Sarah Carba would have fit better uh, with that day for testimony. There were some others as well, but but it ended up being on, on uh, Wednesday, October 23rd on day five. And, um, and you, you, You talked about this a lot. Like she was quite a (laughs) profound witness. So I am excited to hear what happened. Lay it out. Let's hear it. So speaking of people that you can't hear when they're on a stand, Mm. Sarah Carbaugh was not one of them. Right. So my first opinion, I guess you could say, of her was as she was walking up to the witness stand, I thought she was going to be very meek and mild. She just, she looked like she didn't want to be there. And we had just gone through Rayleigh Voorhees and Betsy Blair and Brie Wilbur. And I would say out of the three of those, like Brie Wilbur seemed the most peppy Mm -hmm. in a way. I I don't know exactly what word I want to say, but. She was very clear in everything that she said, and I thought she did a really good job laying things out and making mm-hmm. it as simple as possible. Betsy Whereas Blair I, did as well, I thought. Yeah, Betsy Blair, the thing with me and Betsy Blair is she seemed like she didn't want to be there either, and I don't blame her. It's not like you know she was giving everybody a hard time, but you could tell that she had been over all of the stuff that she was talking about so many times. Yeah. And like she knew that she was just waiting for somebody to try to trip her up. Yeah, I'm sure she was. I think I'm positive she was deposed quite a few times. Oh, yeah. Well, what, we all looked around like, oh, my God, it's Betsy Blair. <laughs> and you she know? had a cane when she come in. Oh, did she? I didn't even notice that. She did. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, this was. I thought she was great, actually. I thought Betsy Blair's testimony was great. But we'll we'll cover that in another day. I want to hear about Sarah Carbaugh. So how old was she, approximately? So the very first thing that I wrote was, she looks young. And, and I said mid-40s just to give, like, a conservative estimate. You know, I didn't want to say too young. I didn't want to say too old. But I always put her and Betsy Blair together as far as the testimonies went. So I was expecting a much older person. And, oh, you know, okay, yeah. yeah. She, you know, long blonde hair. Um, 
I thought maybe late thirties, something like that. Mm -hmm. And she, she walked up to the stand and she, I don't know, there's something about her. Like she just looked like she did not want to be there. So I went, all right, here we go. She's going to be like an in and out and that's going to be it. And then she started talking and I was like, holy shit. (laughs) Like ring up the bat? Yeah. Like the very first questions that they asked her. So I think they, they asked her to describe, you know, where she lived and she's like, I'm as local as you can get. And it was very matter of fact, there wasn't any hesitation about it. And she would look right at the jury too. Anytime that she would talk, she would swivel and look right at the jury. Yeah. So that way they got all the information, didn't care about the rest of the courtroom. I mean, it would just, from every perspective, it was really good. And you know what's interesting about that, just to interrupt you for one moment, is that I made that observation with countless witnesses for the state. They were talking to the jury. They were telling them what happened. Pat Brown, Jake Johns, uh, Steve Mons, uh, Jerry Holman, they were all talking to the jury and i made numerous notations about that so that's interesting so sarah carbaugh did as well oh yeah yeah so they asked her if she knew the monin high trail and she goes absolutely i go almost every day or she did um and then she said she always used the mirror's entrance when she went she never parked down and walked across freedom bridge um she had something about her dog her dog wasn't that friendly so she would go on the trail and i guess walk where she thought there wasn't as many people um and then i wrote a lot more about her like she's stellar phenomenal speaking voice really descriptive loud but not too loud um and then they they asked her you know how did you find out that the girls were missing she's like i think through an amber alert that night you know i didn't think anything of it at first because you hear so much stuff on the news but that definitely concerned me like oh my god where were they were you know um and she had said she had been in that area really all day she was going back and forth through town she had a day off of work she was in a little red saturn so i i was expecting to see a photo of a red car you know the hoosier harvest store camera Yeah. yeah um so she said that she passed maybe three or four times past that mirror's entrance, just trying to gauge how many people were there in case she, she wanted to stop. Oh. Yeah. Huh. yeah she, oh, I, so she wouldn't go because of her, her dog. She would, she would like to go when there wasn't as many people. Is that it? I think it was both. I think that day, because it was such a nice day out, like she's like, yeah, just kind of making loops around town. Like oh, there I wasn't much that. going on. Huh. And, yeah, she said basically joyriding, and I, I didn't know any of that either. I thought she was just passing through once on her way to wherever she what was going that day. You know, that's what I thought everybody was doing. Um, she said that the last time that she drove by, she noticed a group of girls at the mirror's entrance, and all she could say was stressed. That's the one descriptive I would say about all of them, and one of them had bright blonde hair and a bright pink shirt on. So I thought that was going to come up later who that was. I mean, you can make assumptions, well, but what time was like, that? At? Well, she didn't get to that at first. So she had just said, you know, this was the last time that I drove past there and she was going away from town. So she was traveling East and that's where she saw the guy on the side of the road covered in mud and blood. Um, I think Weird. she said, He was on the left side of her, so he was on the north side of the road. Okay. And I believe it was when she passed the cemetery or right before the cemetery. That's where she saw him. And he was walking towards town. Wait, wait. Um, She's traveling east on 300 north. Correct. And he's walking west on 300 north. And he's on the north the north side. So on the side of the Hoosier Harvest store. Yeah. And where in relation to the cemetery? So I believe. Did they show it on the map? 
she went up to the map at some point, but mm -hmm. it wasn't really blown up too much. And where I was yeah, sitting, you couldn't I, see. I, yeah, I think I'm not sure if it was Latrell that was doing the direct with her, but or no, it was it was Deaner actually. So I think she might have been in the way as well, but it was hard to make out hmm. any specifics. Um, but yeah, she she said that she noticed the cemetery, so it must have been right before she got to the cemetery she saw him walking on the other side of the road because it was in between the mirror's entrance and wherever she saw him so the cemetery must have been right after that you know um, i thought he tucked in along the ridge line in that field that is between the mirrors and the cemetery well that's what i would have thought too but even in the pca it says that he's on the north side of the road yeah. Hmm. So he, that's confused, a little bit confusing to me, I guess, because I thought his egress route was along the ridge line of that field that basically is parallel to the 501 trail, but like in the woods and the, on the ridge line of that cornfield that separates the mirror's entrance from the cemetery and i i assumed that he walked the entire way walked up not on the mirror's path but up the ridge line right out off the you know off the cornfield and and onto the road there yeah but I mean, that that's, what, that's sound, what you would expect that doesn't sound like that's what happened no well and also too if there were people at the mirror's lot well yeah and he saw them he true even if you're in the woods, you might think that somebody would catch a glimpse of you. So maybe he's like, well, the only thing I can do is get on the other side of the road. People are focused on yeah. the trail and the lot. So then that's kind of stands to reason that he walked up the ridge line and just, and walked it out along the side of the cemetery then basically, and then crossed the road and, and walked down the 300 North. Must be at hmm. some point. I mean, he was quite exposed there then, but I guess to your, well, he still had to walk past the mirrors entrance. Yeah. Yeah. They said that they didn't get him on camera, but no. talking to other people about that motion cameras are weird. Sometimes yeah. they'll pick stuff up. Sometimes yeah. they won't. Yeah. Even now, let alone back then, who knows how old that camera was to begin with. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I I did see the photos that they passed out to the jury when Mullen mm. testified about the Who's Your Harvest Store video for the Ford Focus, the nine seconds along there. And the resolution was better than I thought it would me, be. Me too. Yo, did you see them as well then? So I didn't I didn't see the black Ford Focus. I saw the first six that he had. It was actually the day before sarah carbaugh because he he gave them to the jury when he was showing them betsy blair's car going back and forth oh. and then kelsey's car going through oh. and um who was oh, the other okay. one oh. oh well he actually he had sarah carbaugh's vehicle in there too but oh okay the problem was they were printed out on regular paper and because they were blurry to begin with i mean it was a lot better quality than i thought yeah and the the frame like how the the image was framed you could see a lot more road than i thought you would be able to right yeah but, i i just remember thinking not for those photos i didn't see those at all obviously i was writing but yeah. i did see when moans testified and they handed out the the images the still frames from the video of the nine seconds of the ford focus dr driving along very it was it was you know, clearer than I thought because we'd had all this discussion about, oh, it could have been 480p and, you know, mm -hmm. maybe it was, but I guess I was just really kind of expecting blurry, you know, a blurry blob. But, I, you know, even from the gallery, I could see in their jury packets when they were flipping the pages, I could see the Black Ford Focus, mm -hmm. um, you know, not the license plate, of course, but y you, you also saw the the vehicles then it, i didn't realize they had showed well i wasn't there that they, this was the day of sarah carbaugh's testimony or no this was no no so when they handed out the day before. Yeah. okay yeah all right that's interesting so, i didn't know that 
it was weird because when I first saw them, obviously we weren't meant to see them. They were handing them out to the jury. Yeah. But I, I sort of saw one of the frames as Mullen was handing them over to the jury. And then the jury was flipping through them. And sometimes yeah. they flip through them in your direction. So you see, right. I, could, I really couldn't make out any car on any of the, the photos. Like it was too far away for me. Yeah. I was expecting at least to see Kelsey's car because it was white and it would stick out. But I, I didn't. And then the next day, I believe actually it was the morning right before Sarah Carbaugh got up. I think Nick wanted to admit a couple exhibits because I don't think he published the exhibits that Mullins gave to the jury the day before. So once they published them and all the attorneys were passing them back and forth, that's when I saw the car in one of them. It was a blue car. I'm not sure whose it was. Oh, okay. Yeah. I would assume it's Betsy Blair's because Sarah Carbaugh says she had a red Saturn and Kelsey's car was white. Yeah. So I was really surprised how much you could see in these photos. Hmm. So, so the sensor on the wet, like the sensor, sensor for the Ford Focus, sorry, not the sensor, the, um, the camera was on the west side of the Hoosier Harvester building. So we'd had some discussion pre-trial about the big evergreen tree that really does cloud a lot of the of the east side of that of that who's your harvest store at the front there um, along the road, but they have multiple cameras, of course. So those ones on the west side that picked up the focus, um, they're quite far back on that building. So that wouldn't surprise me um, if it didn't pick him up walking. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really see any large trees in the frame that I saw. Yeah. Not saying that there there couldn't be one there, but you could you could see where yeah. each side of the road was. I remember one yeah. side of the road was like a little more dead grass. Um, yeah, like the like specifically the testimony for the Ford Focus with Mullen was that the camera that on the Who's Your Harvester that picked up was it was it was um, it had an angled view all the way over to the first house on the south side of 300 North. So and I did a little video on that um, showing exactly because I went there because when he testified he showed it on the map and I could see where he pointed for the nine seconds of frame from that video so it was you know that triangulated spot reaching from the camera on the west side that set quite quite far back on that front building of the who's your harvest store and it, and it goes on an angle all the way out to to approximately where that first uh structure is uh on the map so the first house there's there is an out i think there's an out building i never really looked at it that close but i did specifically look on the map when mullins was pointing it out so i know that that's the angle for at least for the vehicle footage so if if it's you know I'd assume those other vehicles, that's also the same angle. So that makes sense why that tree really had never had anything to do with the, with the, with the footage. Yeah. Cause that it would have been blocked, but, but him walking along that stretch was, it must've been, I mean, it would have been quite far away and obviously didn't pick it up. I mean, that's quite, quite a distance. From well, those cameras. I, I feel like they, they probably set it up. They were probably more concerned about the cars going by. If anything yeah. happened, they would think that somebody would come in a car right. to do whatever or to come pick something up, whatever they do there. Yeah. I'm not really familiar oh, with the building. Oh, but they, they fix uh, silos in the front building and then they have storage units in the back. Yeah. So I, you would just assume like, hey, if anything happens, we know the cars that go back and forth. Right. We'll know the yeah. time. Yeah. And the plate. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. well, maybe the plate. Well, if they pull in there, the plate. Yeah, it could be. Could well, I be. mean, I don't think it was, you know, they wouldn't have been set up to capture the road traffic necessarily more, more so to what's going on in their own property. So yeah, to your point, the sensitivity on them is, was, could have very well been set up not to pick up a, a slow movement like that. Yeah, I know the like the camera that I have in my front door. I, I turn it off half the time because you'll have a squirrel go by. Right. Yeah. And it goes off. So 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. When I do yeah. look at it, it's just to see like if somebody came home or whatever, and I can go back and look. But when the alerts come up, forget about it. I'll have like 50 of them if I don't silence them. Yeah. So yeah, I wouldn't imagine that they would want anyone walking down the road to just set their camera off. But who knows? I didn't get a clear view of everything. I got, you know, my one quick glance at it. I was able to draw a little diagram of like the outline of things. Oh, and I, I, I think I recognized a building in the background, like to the upper left or something, but. Okay. Um, so we've got, so, so what time does she see him at? So she, I, I believe because later on in her testimony, she said, 356 but i think it's because when she talked to them and they went to try to find her car on the camera they told her 356 but she did say that as she was driving past him she noticed the orange glow of the sun because the sun was oh. just starting to go down i guess but that was one specific thing that i remember to write down like that was pretty hmm pretty specific but the sun to know. would have been setting in the west and she was driving well, east right but in the rear view mirror sorry oh like she because she passed the guy and there was a whole back and forth between her and baldwin because baldwin goes well you said you only saw him for an instant you know how could you describe all this stuff about him she's like yeah i saw him for an instant when he was right there next to me but you're driving up to the person you see them as you're coming up on them. <laughs> and then I I kind of swerved a little bit because I didn't want to hit them. And when he was, you know, right parallel to my car, she's like, he had to have been five wait. feet or less from me. And she goes, nope, wait, hold on a second. Three feet or less, I would say. Wait a sec. She's traveling east on the right side of the road and he's walking west on on the north on the left side how, right. how the hell did she get so what i would assume if you're going the opposite way as somebody walking on the You're road right on the road then well yeah i mean in the grass or like right on the road like it's still oh. that's not like a huge distance yeah i mean depending yeah. on where you are i'm sure on that road you're not trying to stay within the lines it's a it's a country road you know yeah yeah and she's oh, joyriding. So so. Tucked way off then. No, not from not from what oh. she said. So he was he was he was he was on a quick walk on that pavement. Then he wasn't hot. Mm -hmm. He definitely did. He wasn't trying to hide along that road. No, I. It's weird to me, and it, everything that she said was really anything anyone said was mm. believable. You know, it didn't seem like they were yeah. trying well, to fool you. And right. with her, like, she... It's a memory thing, too, right? Exactly. We're exactly. And there's certain things that you remember better. Like, if it was yeah. two people walking down the road and everything looked hunky-dory, you wouldn't really remember it. But for this, she was very... She was not taking any crap from anybody. <laughs> what she had said. Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was great. I, I, I was falling in love with this woman as she's sitting there speaking. Like, I could not believe from my first <laughs> thoughts of her. And then as soon as she opened her mouth to speak, That's I was funny. like, holy crap. Yeah, you, she was like a hero to you that day. Oh, yeah. Somebody actually clapped after her testimony. It was one person. No. And you, really? Yeah. You heard like a really soft, slow clap. And I'm like, thank you, because I wanted to do that so Oh, bad. my God. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah, I think with her, especially once Baldwin started getting into her first and second testimony. So he didn't testimony, get to her, did he? No, not at all. I think she got to him. So tell me about that. So let's see. <laughs> well, let me back it up a little bit. Yeah. I'll go through the rest of what I have as far as her sighting of him. So. She had slowed down when she got right up on this guy because she didn't want to hit him. And I'm sure she was taking a joyride. So she's just sitting there having a good old time. Wasn't really paying attention to 
Yeah. Staying on the right side, the left side, no one was coming probably at the time. Hmm. Um, and I, I made the note, there's zero hesitation hmm. whatsoever when she's describing what she saw. And they even brought out the still frame of bridge guy. And she goes, yep, I'm going to label this bridge guy. She wrote on <laughs> the, on the picture with permanent marker. No. She's like, because that's, I know that's who I saw. As soon oh as I saw God. this photo, wow. I knew that this was who it was. Holy and they were God. asking everybody, you know, can you write on this map where you were? Can you draw a little line, circle it, and then initial it so we can give it to the oh. jury to look over? And she was like, yep, this is Bridge Guy. She signed his name and then signed her name under it. No way. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> so the next thing was something that I wasn't sure about because I hadn't heard the specifics about how she had described him. So the mud was a big surprise to me because I thought maybe somebody slips in the mud, you got a little bit of mud on you. She said, no, he was caked with mud from head to toe. Caked? Caked. Wow. She said he looked, he looked like he had just fallen off a cliff Holy shit. down into a ditch. And she even said that she knew that this guy had to have been right down by the creek where it was really muddy and, and all the waters mixing in with the soil and stuff because there's no way you would have that much mud on you in that area oh. if you weren't by water. Right, yeah. Um, huh. And then the blood was, she saw it on his legs, his like his lower legs and his oh. feet. She goes, he oh. could have had blood on his jacket, but everything was so dark that oh. it could have blended in. Like I didn't see him for five minutes. I probably saw him for a span of like maybe 30 seconds from the time I first saw him to when I got to him and then passed him. So that was, that was interesting. I didn't know it was that much mud. Um, how, how, what about the quantity of blood? So the blood, as far as the quantity, I can't really say. She was very adamant about why she noticed the blood because she was saying how the jeans were light. You could see mud caked on them in areas, but she could tell that they were light blue jeans. And the blood, she turned to the jury and she said, you know when blood's fresh and it's bright red? That's what it was like, and that's why it stuck out to me so much. And she said there could have been blood in other areas, but – the jacket with the mud and everything, it was so dark that you, you weren't going to be able to pick that out with all mm. the other colors involved. Jeez. Yeah. Um, she said that he was, you know, kind of hunched with his head down. She even got up at one point to show how he was, he was looking. Oh, she had really? Her... Oh, yeah. She was but trying she to got be off the witness to... stand on her own? No, she just stood up Oh, and did, the like, the little hunch. Huh. Yeah. Wow. But she said he always had his hands in his pockets. He was, she just, she said he was weird. That was the big thing. It was just said he was weird. weird. Yeah. He just, the way that he was walking, um, they were asking her about the hat that he had on. She goes, you know, at a certain point, you, if you only know baseball caps, that's the only hat that you know. So any other, type of hat is a weird hat to you so right. she told them a weird hat because it wasn't the stereotypical baseball cap did she discuss a baseball cap or are you just is that your no like your no hat? well she she had said you know i only really know what baseball caps look like so oh, the hat okay. that he was wearing huh. i said that it was weird looking because it wasn't a baseball cap but oh, she wow. said it was frumpy the hat was frumpy, frumpy. So whatever that means Wow. You can use your imagination. I, oh, yeah. Jeez. Um, she didn't know if the hat had flaps, but she did see the bottom of his ears. And I think she was the third person to say that she saw a little bit of hair sticking out of the cap. Not that it was curly, but there was hair a little bit sticking out of the bottom of it. And it was the third person that I heard say that. And I think the other three were the day before. So I thought that oh. that was pertinent to write down wow <sighs> consistency then there right and the little details really yeah yeah i mean generally uh 
Jeez, I I hadn't heard any of that, so that's very interesting. The thing that really got me, though, that, I mean, this is when her and Baldwin are going back and forth. <laughs> she tells Baldwin she'd really wish he'd get to the point because <gasps> oh, he, She I, did? I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> he, <laughs> he, Sass. I love oh, it. Yeah. I know. I, I was really, when you told me, you didn't tell me all this by any no. means, but like I could tell she made a big impact on you. And I oh, was yeah. like, damn it. <laughs> all right. I got to go back. I keep getting ahead of myself and, and <laughs> speaking out of turn. So <laughs> they, they were asking, you know, you didn't go to the police for three weeks, correct? And she said, well, I'm one of those people. I have zero interest in like true crime and anything to do with murder that it freaks me out and I have really bad anxiety. So oh. I saw this person and I didn't think anything of it at first. And then once I found out that the girls were murdered and that picture came out, it yeah. freaked her out. I mean, the, the guy she was scared was living in the town as far as she knew. Yeah. So it, that's really how she explained it. She's like, I was really scared. freaked out by it. And everybody made a, a huge deal out of that. Like, oh my God, you know, you didn't go for three weeks. Somebody must've gotten you and convinced you to tell the police that you saw somebody. She's like, no, it really freaked me out. And it, it's weird for somebody like her because she seems very confident in herself. Debilitating but, fear. Yeah. And that's, she's like, anyone that knows me will tell you I stay right away from it. I don't even watch the shows, but she was passing the mirrors a lot a couple weeks later and she saw police there asking people questions because the whole town was flipped upside down and it all of that just kind of reminded her like she was in the same place that she saw the guy and she's like you know huh. two little girls are dead you should be brave like even if nothing mm -hmm. comes of it right stop and and say something just in case so the first interview I guess she said mud 11 times, according to Baldwin. He wanted to point that out. And everyone's like, okay. But right. you never said blood. And she goes, yes, I did. And he goes, well, according to the transcript, and she's like, that's fine. But I definitely said that there was blood on him because there was blood on him. It was very apparent to me. He goes, well, let me give you the transcript. She's like, you can give me the transcript, but I know what I said. She goes, uh, she was able to rewatch her taped interviews. Mm -hmm. So I think in the transcript, it was written as she mumbled something when right. she said blood. She's like, I was really nervous during that first interview. And there were a couple spots where it just says mumbles because they couldn't hmm. hear what she was saying on the video that they had recorded of it. Oh, gee. And so... You know, Baldwin goes into that. I said, she's a spitfire arguing mm -hmm. with Baldwin about what she said. Yeah. And I guess there was an hour of that first video that's missing. So that that was when I made my opinion of Baldwin because he went, oh, and he turned towards the jury. He's like, missing video? In a case like this? You'll be surprised to find out, ladies and gentlemen, that this case is plagued with missing videos. And she's like, no, 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 no. We're not going to do this. So I wrote, I wrote, she's not having it in all caps. She was so pissed. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes. She, like, I, she was like, no, sir. I was sitting Girl. there waiting to see a fight. Like, it was oh that God. exciting. Contentious. <laughs> How was everybody reacting to this in the gallery? I have no idea. I was so <laughs> locked in on You're her. I was, well... <laughs> <laughs> I, there are so many moments from that two week period where I was so overtired that even the <laughs> littlest things would get an emotional reaction out of me yeah, yeah, in so many sure. different ways. For sure. So I was just really excited. I, I was kind of scared at the same time, too, because I was waiting for Gall to be like, hey, everybody calm down. You know, it's okay. You can feel the heat <laughs> coming off of both everything of them. Everything was allowed to continue then. Oh my God. Yeah. I was, I was surprised at the end of it and I'll say why oh. once I get to the end. Okay. But... <laughs> Keep going, man. 
So then after that, Baldwin decides to start talking about the second interview. And he's like, you said muddy 13 times in that interview. And then that's when she tells Baldwin she, she really wish he'd get to the point. And <laughs> she knows that he's just doing his job. And he's doing a really good job. But She said that? Yeah. She's like, <laughs> she's like, I know you're just doing your job. And I think you're doing a really good job. But you're not going to convince me that I didn't say this every time they called me back and asked me, you know, um, <laughs> she, she actually corrected him at one point because he was, he misspoke. He kept saying bloody and muddy. And she's like, no, I said muddy and bloody according to my transcript that you just put in front of my face. And he, Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It was just, it was funny. I mean, that's something stupid that anybody would get wrong, but in the moment, Oh, Oh, wow. <laughs> Wow. So, so this is the part that got me because right before trial, right around the whole Frank's memo thing, they made a big stink about, no, she actually said that it was a tan jacket and he was just muddy. And she's like, I did say tan jacket in that first interview because it was so caked in mud that it looked tan. Yeah. And that it made sense. She had just talked about 10 minutes earlier how caked in mud it was, of, of course it's going to look tan. Maybe it had, you know, a little bit of the blue coming out, but I didn't see him. I, I might have thought it was tan too. Plus he had that tan hoodie on underneath or the brown hoodie, whatever it was. She said that or that's you saying that? No, she said that. Oh, she did? Cause, yeah, because he asked her about the tan sweater and she said it was under the jacket. And she uh, called it a hoodie? I, I think... I think Baldwin called it a sweater and she just said, she said that it had a hood. She oh, didn't okay. say hoodie, but okay. yeah. it was clear that that's what she was wow. talking about. And then let's see, this is when she got up and she did the whole thing with the, his posture. Like he had his hands in his pockets, but his shoulders were kind of pushed in a little bit. Like he was trying to be as small as possible. Or just, you know, kind of hunched over. Hmm. Like, he, he didn't pick his head up or anything. Never looked at her. Um, oh, he didn't? No. No. Hmm. She, I think that was from the very beginning. Yeah, she looked at him, but he didn't make eye contact with her. And, you know, she could see up close even more when she got to him about the blood because at first you probably don't think you're staring at somebody that's got blood all over their legs, but she, she got right up close to him, you know, three feet or so by the time she was parallel with him, and she saw what she saw and at every point. She would make it very clear to the jury that whatever they're trying to tell me, I said, or didn't say, it's been blood from the I very saw. beginning. Yeah. yeah. So, mm. so then he goes back to, you said mud 13 times in the second interview. And she goes, we're doing this again. <laughs> I lost. Ooh. I lost it. I lost it. Ouch. Oh. Sounds like she owned Baldwin to me. <laughs> I, she was one of those people, like, put her up against anybody. Like, especially for this stuff. Normally, if it was someone arguing over something arbitrary. You wouldn't expect them to be as forceful, but we all knew that this woman had gotten yeah. everything yeah. thrown at her over the last seven years. And yeah. she made it a point to tell everybody, other than this testimony, I want nothing to do with this trial. I don't right. even want to be here right now. Yeah. I don't like any of this stuff, as I told you. So I think everything that she was doing, she wanted to make sure she didn't have to come back in. And do anything else. Whew. And that's. Wow. I mean that's pretty much. Derek the Harden. gist of everything. Yeah. And then wow. the, the slow clap at the end. <laughs> the whole time. I, I looked at Gull a couple of times. Because wow. I was waiting for her to. Put oh. an end to it. And I think she knew too. It's not like she wasn't. Saying anything out of place. Like Baldwin was pushing her buttons. Just yeah. as much as. So, wow. yeah, it was great. It mm -hmm. She was my favorite witness out of the whole, other than Gallipo, I think 
I yeah. think she definitely has a couple more points on Gallup, but yeah, otherwise that was your first time with Gallup. Yeah, he's he's he he's a great witness. I, I didn't see his third bit of testimony, but I certainly saw a lot of him in his in the other trial and the other hearing rather. Um yeah, that was the day that I, I was running on two days of no sleep. <laughs> and I, w I was going to leave that day after the morning session because I was so tired. And I'm like, I can't do it. And somebody goes, it it's going to be confession day. So I'm like, okay, oh, okay. <laughs> I'll go back up there. And for the first hour and a half, it was sidebars and you know <laughs> all the stuff that just gets in the way of other people yeah. coming in to testify. So I'm falling asleep. And then he gets up. <laughs> I could wow. not stop laughing, just convulsing with oh, laughing. Oh yeah, and Rosie did. Rosie did the uh, direct, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I'm surprised by that because he, Gallopo really got under Rosie's skin. I can see why. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, huh. He was another person. Every single question that he was given, he was very matter of fact about it. He had a logical reason for everything he was asked. I mean, I was answering questions for the guy because some of them were ridiculous. Yeah. As you can imagine, with all the prison stuff, oh, at yeah. a certain point, it, it's like it's a prison. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's great. That's Thank you so much for sharing that with Sarah Karma. Now, who did the um, cross? Or no, that was. Um, so Diener did the direct. The what are, what day are we? Oh, this was that was on cross then. Who, yes. who that? Oh, Diener did the. Yeah, she did the direct. Oh, yep. okay. So she just got basic facts out with her. Yeah, she she basically asked her where she lived and how long she had been there, just trying to get people familiar with her and if she knew that yeah. area well. Um, she she really didn't ask her many questions. Right. I I think after she brought the the bridge guy picture up to her and had her sign it like is this the guy you saw i think there weren't any other questions right yeah wow well <laughs> how long would you say she was on for or do you have it in your notes like was this just you know a 15 20 minute yeah i it i mean it was no melissa oberg but <laughs> it, i mean i would say a good half hour half okay. hour to 45 minutes tops yeah well, that's but good. I was I was lost in it, so I couldn't really tell you. And Time you didn't know who was clapping? No, no, it so was on it was on the time? family side. Oh, okay. it was on the family side. Yeah, but I was I was happy. I really wanted to, but I didn't want to get kicked out. So right, you didn't hear it anyways. From yeah, I'm sure. What nobody, I noticed, I'm sure nobody really heard it. Uh, you know, did you see any reaction of the jury? I think. That was one of the reasons why I was surprised Gull didn't say anything because I think at that point, even though it was only the third day that I had been there, there was so much contention between the state and the defense in a lot of the other witnesses too with some of the poking, like stop asking this person questions that they can't answer because it's not within the scope of their profession or, yeah. you know, the state was objecting yeah. a million times, whether each side was right or wrong. I think yeah. the jurors just got sick of it because it made yeah. it last so much longer and it didn't seem like there was a point. Yeah. So yeah, they, they looked, some of them looked a little irritated, like, okay, come on, let's be adults. With Baldwin? I think with both of them, just like I said, both so sides Sarah throughout the whole thing. Yeah. They didn't know what we knew. So to them, she must have just seemed like somebody that had a chip on her shoulder and an attitude. But we all got it, you know? Yeah, right. Hmm. Well, that's interesting for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is there anything else that you'd like to say? Because that was one hell of a run on Sarah Carbaugh. I'm sure everybody's going to be thrilled to hear all about this. I mean, hey, if uh, she's single, hit me up. I think you're great, and I've never spoken a word to you. But <laughs> you're a fan. <laughs> I'm a I'm a very big fan. Just <laughs> just by hearing a conversation between her and somebody else, I think that's the first time that's ever happened to me. <laughs> smitten. You were smitten by 
a witness at trial. Okay. <laughs> I was very sleep deprived, but I, I think I would still say it if, even if I got in a full eight hours. Oh, well, thank you so much, Teddy, for yeah, joining me and recounting that. And I look forward to doing uh, further reviews from trial with you. It was, uh, you tell a great story. You laid it out great. And I was, I was waiting to hear the whole, you know, the whole spiel on Sarah Carbine. You definitely didn't disappoint. Those were great. Uh, that was a great recount. Of it's fun to tell the grandkids for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> You're going to become a trial junkie. Oh, uh, God. I hope not. <laughs> I don't have the time nor the funds for that. Yeah. Well, uh, you have a good night and until next time. Absolutely. Take it okay. easy. It was good yeah. talking to you. Okay. Bye. Bye.